Basket Talk, Ausgabe 10, Basket Talk, Episode number 10 with Mr. Kurt Luby. Welcome, sir. Yeah, thanks, man. Originally, I, I do think we have to uh, rename the whole episode to Basket Talk number 5, so because you were number 5, I were number 5, so <laughs> 5 and 5 makes 10, so in the end it does fit. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to talk about the Bremerhaven game, the carnival game. We have to talk about uh, the last week that had uh, three games in seven days for us. We have to talk about Tübingen, we have to talk about Ryan Brooks and we finally, and, and somewhere in between, we have to talk about what it's like to be a true center in this league where nobody has plays only one in one position, can switch between a couple positions and uh, you will be in our true five man, uh, what, what it's like. So to start things off, uh, let's talk about the Bremerhaven game. It's been a close one, it's been a thriller, and it's been, um, as we said, it's been the, the end of the three games in seven days stint. So uh, take us through the last timeout, Coach Turk, and uh, take us through those last, what it's been like, 21, 22 seconds, what's been the mindset, what did you guys discuss in, inside this time out? Well, definitely, you know, coach prepared us, you know, the um, three games in seven days, coach prepared us well, you know, he basically gave our body enough rest and, you know, he came up with a game plan, you know, and he said we have, you know, three games in seven days, so we need to be focused and stuff like that. So it worked, you know, and every guy, everybody stuck together, and you know, we came up, we came up with three, three big wins. So with the um the game, Reverend Halvin, you know, is like I think you know everybody was excited, everybody was excited, and you know, coach prepared us, talked to us, gave us a little chat about that game too. You know, it's. It's new for some guys, including him, you know, for the yeah. carnival game. And, you know, Coach Carson told us what it's going to be like. So for some of the guys on the team, including me, you know, seeing the whole experience. I, when I was at Lewisburg, I played the carnival game here against Bond. So I saw a little bit of it, you know. Yeah. But walking in and have to be a part of it, you know, a part of Bond, it was like, you know, it was a different feeling. So. Yeah. Some of the guys on the team, including me, was <laughs> probably feeling the same way as Bremer have like, yo, what are we getting ourselves into? You know, and I just feel the last 20 seconds of the game, you know, and the time old coach took and stuff, I feel everybody kind of got a flashback. When I say flashback, it's like the own game. So, including me, I was on the bench, but I was like, everybody, we saw that in their eyes, like, what can we do to, you know, to make them take a tough shot? And coach basically told us what to do, and, you know, he told us, guys, just stay focused, and he didn't have to remind us about the um games and the last few games, you know, the games we love in his current situation, and I saw the look in the guy's eyes and the, the look on you know, everybody that we need to, whatever it is, we need to give them a tough shot yeah. and what we hard on us for the whole year, we need to box out. So I think that was everybody's main concern was like box out, no matter what it is, box out, you know, and I saw after the game, everybody basically came in the huddle and they said, man, we didn't want that to happen again. So I think coach prepares, as I said, to the whole week and got it done, you know, so it was a great feeling and it made the night much better for everybody, you know, all the Bond fans and stuff like that, you know, so it was a good experience, you know. Absolutely, and I think two crucial things happened on that particular play. First, Ryan picking up Adams and not letting him pass, even though he switched hands two times, and then have Bremerhaven as you already said, take, take a, not, not a bad shot, but a extremely contested shot. Yeah, definitely. Ryan Brooks, you know, he jumped, you know, he jumped so high on that play after he was giving us all this, you know, energy on offense plus defense and the last play, he knew that, man, 
we need this win and we had flash we know yeah. you know we'd be losing games like this so you know and as coach said when it comes to defense it's all about communication and I just feel at the end of that play you know at the 20 seconds everybody was focused and then we realized okay it's communication going to take us over the hump and coach been talking about that for the whole you know the whole time we've been here and it finally you know it finally paid up paid off so yeah. um inside that huddle was that obvious to everybody that Bremerhaven is going to give the ball or going to, to lay the hand uh, the ball into the hands of Darius Adams or was there talk about yeah let's deny Adams to even get the ball out of the inbounds what was the 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 mindset over there? Well, definitely, we already knew Adams at the end of the day. I mean, he's the man. Yeah, so we knew he was going to get a ball. The thing about it, we knew he was going to get a ball. We knew we had to give him a tough shot. Mm -hmm. But at the end, the end of it, when I was on the bench and I'm looking at it, I'm like, why he took so long to make a play? Because you know? he did not want us to grab the defensive rebound just in case he misses and does not want to, you know, or maybe, maybe if, even if he makes it, We still might have like like 10 seconds to you know turn things around once more. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe that was their thinking. Maybe they, they, their thought process was like, okay, we have one final possession, 24 seconds, clock is out, so let's make it take the shot, win yeah, or go home. Yeah, win or yeah, win or go home, and yeah. I think that was they're going for. So that was the guys at the end of the game. We were sitting down. We was like, why he took so long? By him doing that, you know, it gave us more time yeah. to set up our defense and more time to communicate. So, you know, when we see, when we saw that, you know, at the end of the game, anybody can be a hero. But when we saw Allen took that shot, it was like, you know, it was a plus for us. So, I mean, it was well contested. So the main problem after that was just box out and rebound. Yeah, so, we did that. I, yeah. think, I think it was Tony who had his fingertips on, on the yeah. ball and just tipped it. Somewhere and then time was running out and everybody, uh, you know. Yeah, it was. It was a great. It was a great feeling, you know. At the end of the day, I just feel that you know everybody contributes. You know, everybody did something, and we just we just need to stick together. You know, we yeah. just need to stick together and just find a way to win. How tired were you guys going into this game? I mean, we're talking about the third game in seven days, and I talked about it uh, with. With coach after the Fechta game, we had um, during the after after the, the Frankfurt game we had two guy, only two guys with I think 20, 25 minutes or more. Uh, when we look at the the Fechter game, we had a couple, couple more guys who had uh, you know had to go for major minutes. We had uh, th four guys who had uh, had been going for 30 plus minutes. Uh, so, so what was the, the energy, so what did the, the overall energy level look like going into this one? Yeah, I think everybody, guys, you know, guys was tired, but I think at the end of the day, you know, as I said, coach prepared us well, you know, coach prepared us well, gave us time to rest, gave us time, you know, gave us time to recover, but everybody knew we had to get it done. With a new player came, you know, new player came in, you know, Eugene, we had that extra fire, you know, he came in, everybody was, you know, everybody was excited, you know, it's, for instance, we got to move on, I don't want to talk about the situation, but, you know, we had to move on, and everybody, I feel by someone coming in, it give any team a, a boost, you know, to start some, start the next chapter, you know, and if you look around the league, every time a new guy come in on a team, they have that extra new guy or new coach, they have that extra fire, so it happened at the right time, you know, so. Yeah. And, and the one thing is that the opposing team does not know what to expect from you. Yeah. Because they don't have no video footage. There's absolutely nothing they, they, they can know about this guy. Yes, and it's, it's, I mean, he came in after the Fechter game. You guys had like three, maybe four practices together, and and the situation is too. They probably like, for instance, Brahma Heaven is a pretty, is a decent team, you know. And I feel a lot of the reason why they be beating guys because a lot of people take them for granted. Mm -hmm. So they probably took us for granted just because you know we 
our point, Jerry Jordan left and Gina came in, so they, brought, they basically was like, you know, it's going to be much easier, yeah. you know, and then they probably lapsed. They probably take time off, you know, on certain possessions, but it worked out in our favor, so. How important is it, especially when we're talking about three games in seven days, and I mean, everybody has to get more tired over the course of the week. Uh, how important is it in those kind of games that you make your free throws? I mean, those are this. It's widely known as the most uncontested shot in the game, and over those three games, we we were a combined 40 out of 53. That makes. 75.5 percent. Uh, How important is it that during that span of a week with three games and seven days that, that you make your free throws as a team? Yeah, definitely it's all about focus, you know, at the end of the guys just tuned in and guys, basically we're a team like, I just figure when we're going down, you know, we're having bad sequences in the game, we don't get at each other. You know, we pick each other up. And I feel that we've been doing a good job of that the whole year. And I believe in the three games, that's when we more need, you know, because mentally and physically guys, guys are tired. So I feel by holding each other together, pulling each other together, like for instance, I got in foul trouble in the vector game. And, you know, mentally, through the whole year, mentally that's been a, big part for me like you know it just get me out of rhythm because that's I play defense and if every time I make I play defense I get a full call you know it take me out of rhythm it make you know Jamel play more minutes and it just get us all to sink a little bit so overall I just see we have you know great group of guys and we just hold each other together like for instance when it's crunch time when it's Three games in seven days. We need each other, yeah. you know, and may, I think that would make the free throws a little much easier to make yeah. in crunch time. So, yeah, and when you when you have your rhythm, uh, so you already mentioned it, uh, um, that with you may, maybe for if, if there's there's a time when you are in foul trouble early that we have to give Mel more minutes. And that's what we don't want initially. Yeah. I mean, we want him to, to get some rest, bring you in, have your, have some impact in the game, and then, you know, have you support and, and bring him in. And, and, and that's, I think, that's why I say coach is doing a great job because he's definitely, you know, if we have four big guys and if any one of us get in foul trouble, we have to find a way to let it yeah. work. And, you know, coach basically is doing a good job finding a way to make Steve and Gaffney, you know, man, find a way to make it work. And that's what we've been doing, you know, if a guy getting in foul trouble, if a guy, you know, whatever the situation is, he's, he's finding a way to let guys, you know, we come out with a good result. And I feel that has to do with the group of guys we have, you know, the group of guys we have, we just, you know, we hold each other accountable and, you know, on the court, we just, we find a way and that's, The main important thing, yeah, and especially when when you are on, on court, you can you know everybody can uh, stick to their strengths, yeah. you know, and that's what what makes our team extremely strong because we have so many versatile players there, and 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 uh, have players that can bring something extra special to the table that nobody else from our group can can bring to the table, and that's what makes the whole thing you know work. And I think I think part of it too is like. Use me for instance, like everybody want to play more minutes, everybody want to score points, everybody, you know, but I think we have a team where, you know, it's not about that. I think it's about, at the end of the day, we have to, you know, let's win these games. For instance, like shooting the three-pointer, I'm not just going to go there and shoot a three-pointer you know, shoot the three-point in a game. I know that's not my strength. You know, probably in other teams, guys know that's not their strength, but they say, let me take this three-point shot. You know, and that's stuff like that which slow, slowly break a team apart, you know, yeah. if guys doing their own individual stuff. So I just stick to my strength, 
and I feel everybody's all about winning. So if that's dribbling, you dribbling the basketball ain't just strength. We don't have guys out there doing it. Yeah. Like we, Steve, he's a good pick and pop shooter. So we set up plays so Steve shoot. And if Steve don't shoot the basketball, then we get on him. Steve, you was open. We can't get a better shot. On the low post with, on the low post with Jamel, mm -hmm. you know, attack the basket. Me on defense, if I get in foul trouble, guys look at me and say, Kurt, you know, all the referees calling the games, trying to stay out of foul trouble. So we have guys, we know his strength and we stick to it. You know, we're not, we're not as deep as Munich, Bamberg, but we stick to our strength and we stick together. Yeah. And that's the main important thing. And I talked about, especially that aspect, um, with Ben a couple, couple of weeks back, um, you know, that he had his shooting slump and he is our main threat from the outside. Yeah. It is as simple as that. And he was, yeah, I don't know, it's my, I, I do take my routines and I, and I hit him up and, you know, I don't make him or I did not make them for, for a couple, a couple of weeks. But he said, Everybody, whether it's coaches, whether it's staff, whether it's his teammates, everybody says, hey, if you don't take the shot, nobody else will. I mean, because you are a shooter. So that's what you do. So you have to, you have to at least hit it and you know, let, it, let it fly. If, you hit, if, you, it's, if it's a make or a miss, okay, that's a whole other different thing. But we need you to take this shot. And definitely even... That's, that's a good example because I remember talking to Benos. Like, Benos, he's shooting, he's, one, he's the best shooter we have, him and Steve on the outside. So I look at Benos, he was going through that slump, you know, and you know, you have outside people talking like, Benos not doing this, he's, you know, why he's not shooting like how he was shooting early in the year. And I told Benos, Benos, you, sh you basically shooting the tweets for me and you, I'm not shooting it. So you shooting it for me and you, you know? It, yeah. The same situation when D-Max, D-Max was starting. You know, we have the team like, okay, I'm not thinking, oh, D-Max gonna go out there, he's gonna be nervous, no. So I'll talk to D-Max and I know other guys did it individually. D-Max, this is your time now. Go out there, just, you know, take your time, be patient, and, you know, we believe in you. Yeah. You know, and he went out there and he did his, he did his thing, you know, and it, I feel it's just the chemistry we have as a team. Like when someone is down, we just, you know, we just don't keep our feet on them. We, we bring them up, we talk to them, you know, as teammates, so, you know, and it, I feel that's the main important thing and people wonder why we winning. Absolutely. So let's talk about how important is it to have a real big man? How important is it to have a real center, a real five man on your roster? with you being that five man. I mean, Tony is a four, can play the three at times if we play extremely big. Mel is a four who plays the five because he's got a big butt. And then we have Steve who is a four man as well. So we got you at the center position as our true five man. How important is it to have you on our squad? Yeah, definitely. Definitely is, is important to have a you know a five man. I see it in the games because some of the time I'm in the games I realize guys don't want to come into the paint. And when they're passing it, they they you know they setting up plays to go in the post and I'm in there in the post. Yeah. It's like they're not trying to pass it in the post. Like for instance last game I was fronting the post, I was you know doing stuff and I wasn't really You know, it, it was like I was taking a break because I'm in the post and they're not really pounding it in the side, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we have a foreman in the post, they try to isolate and they try to post up the foreman and stuff like that. So I feel it's really important, especially, for instance, working on my offense. You know, if you have a five man that can play defense and, you know, lock down the middle and plus on the offensive end can, you know, give you some points on the offensive end too, that's a plus. And, you know, that's where Jamel, me and Jamel, we work off each other. You know, we work off each other, so I know he have to give the extra on offense. Yeah. You know, and I know on defense, I have to give the extra. 
you know, and together we work together as a team, you know, everybody. So for instance, I know um, Steve, he have to give us those threes when he open. He's not going to be running the floor like Gaffney. So when Gaffney come in the game, Gaffney can hit the threes, but Gaffney give us that extra when it come on sprinting the floor, dunking, you know, being aggressive, denying. So I'm coming off a topic a little bit, but I just feel like for a five man, you definitely need one. Yeah. Especially when, when, when you face teams that are you know, that have a big front line, like, like the Alba Berlins, like the Munichs, like the Bambergs, you know, you need big guys down low. And that's the thing about it, when we play Munich, when we play Munich and we played, when we play Munich and we played Alba Berlin, that's the main, that's one of my main concern, staying out of foul trouble. Yeah. Because if I'm staying out of foul trouble, I know I can guard these guys. I know I make it tough on them, you know, and you definitely need that. And I think a lot, of, a lot of this has to do, I mean, we're talking about fault trouble, a lot of this has to do with many teams bringing in four guys that are playing the five spot. I mean, you face Mel every, every day in practice. Yeah. How hard is it to, to guard a, 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 an original four who's playing the five who's smaller than you? I mean, when, when you have like, I, for, for instance, guarding a John Bryant is... That's how I'm thinking. Is completely different from guarding a Jamal McLean. Yeah, my or, or maybe maybe even easier because he is bigger and bulkier and, and not as as, as as not a little bit smaller and more mobile. Yeah, it's kind of like in this league, a lot of on they have a lot of on the size five, mm. and it's to me. I hate guarding guys that's on the sides, you know, because yeah. they can put the ball on the floor much more and, you know, take me out of the paint and stuff like that, you know. I have my athleticism to make up for it, you know. So guarding a bigger guy is much easier because then, and for instance, it's much easier because me and him can battle and it won't be, you know, the ref won't blow a foul as quick as if I'm guarding an on the sides yeah. four man, you know, so. And even for... Guarding Mel in practice every day. I feel it's much harder guarding Mel in practice than guarding someone in the game. You know, because he's, he's basically a foreman, you know, yeah. so he basically get me prepared to guarding guys in the league, so. And I know that this is a little bit off topic, but we're, we're f so off topic right now that doesn't even matter. Um, what I was thinking about on, on defense when we had you and Gaffney on the floor I remember I think it was the first or second time we, we played both of you guys at the same time I was saying to my to my neighbor this might be the maybe one of the most one of the sexiest defensive lineups I've ever seen because when you guys lock down down low and spread your arms it's like from from you know the one side of the court to, to the other because yeah. both of you guys have this wide wingspan. So how sexy is it to play defense with Tony down low? Yeah, when, it, when, it, when I'm playing with Tony, yeah, as you said, it's, 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 much, it's much, you know, it's easier because I already know I have someone down there with the same defense mindset as me, you know, <laughs> so... I know any given night when every week we on rhythm and you know we enter it defensively, I know we can come up with you know three block shots apiece. You know, I wouldn't go to the paint ahead. as a guard. Yeah, no one we want to come to the no. paint, you know. So yeah. it's like, and I feel some of the time we with that mindset. If someone in the post, they have to worry about making a move on me. I can block the shot, and I know definitely Tony might come weak side and still get a piece of it. Yeah. And that's vice versa. So, you know, it's like, it, it's a crazy matchup when it's me and him. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's threatening yeah. to, every, to everybody, whether, whether it's, it's low post player or whether it's some guys that are, you know, from, from the opposing backcourt. And even, I mean, uh, I'd even take a, take a bad three-pointer instead of driving the lane. And even when it comes to the other team have a fast break, you have two guys you know, two big guys that can sprint the floor. You have two big guys that can hedge on pick and roll. You have two big guys that's 
active that can move. So it's really tough on the other team, you know. So how much did the the game, the ro the overall game, and then you mentioned already, the, you know, the many pick and roll plays where you hatch out as a big man and stuff like that. How much did the game for for a true big man change over the last? Let's say five, six, seven, seven years. I mean, be, being 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 a ball player in the nineties, it was like, okay, you got your true center, you got your true power forward, and they stay down low. Maybe, maybe somebody's coming up to the free throw line for for as as being the, the high post player. But in today's game, there are so many high pick and rolls, and, and the the big guys have to you know come out and and hedge and um, work along the perimeter. Uh, so how much did you have to to adapt your game to to that new kind of kind of basketball era? Yeah, definitely. Looking at it back then, you know, a lot of guys sitting in the paint. Even in college, when I was in college, I would, I would just be in the paint by the free throw line, you know. And to me, it was easier. You know, it was so much easier because you just, you know, you you box a guy or get a rebound. When I came here, coach said he wanted the hedge, which in, he asked me if I can do it. I said, I never done it like, you know, as much because I know it take a lot of work. Maybe you should have said, hey, that's not in my contract. Yeah. I yeah. don't have to hedge, coach. I don't have to. Yeah, definitely. But I, when I'm doing it, I see how much it, it helps. Yeah. By re hedging, it helps. And I feel a lot of big guys don't want to do it. Because it takes a lot of work because you have to hedge and you have to run back. Yeah. But if you look on all these top teams, the guys that's like one of my favorite the guy I like to watch and back in his young days he did it pretty good was Dom, Bunny Face, mm -hmm. um, he did it pretty good with hedging and running yeah. back and you know I think that you know Code said it's really gonna help us out so we have to practice it to get better. Yeah. And you know, we've been getting better. And man look at me and he told me I messed it up for him. Because when I came and coach told me he wanted us to start hedging, I start hedging, 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 hedging. And now coach said, no, everybody should be able to hedge. So, you know, that, so, if so Mel, Mel's got to work. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and he, he's doing pretty good at it now. Yeah. So. But the game have changed a lot. Looking back, you know, watching all these games in the 90s and stuff like that, you're true big man, they're just sitting in the paint. Yeah. You know, they're just sitting in the paint. If you lucky if they pass the um if they pass the um free throw line. Absolutely. You like, know? That's what I loved about uh, watching it was a couple, couple earlier that, that year. Uh, I had some, some time and I watched the, the old NBA Finals, the, the 94-95 series, you know, with Houston versus New York and Houston versus Orlando. It was Olajuwon versus Ewing and Olajuwon versus Shaq O'Neal. And that was like, you know, center of matchup heaven. And the thing about it, I look at it now, I feel is, you know, it, we have a lot more athletic big guys because I was watching just the other day I was watching the game in the 90s and it took the big guys so long to run back the other you know the other direction yeah. so basically you have the guards down there waiting in them to to you know set up a play or they doing a fast break and after when they score the bucket then you see the big guys running back so I feel by you know the game is much more faster now Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. even watching the NBA, you know, it's so much faster because you have big guys that can move. Yeah, and they, and they have to. And they have to. Um, looking forward, let's take a look forward. It's Tübingen. And during research, what crossed my mind was Tübingen has only three players that have played every single game for those guys. And with our team, it's six guys who has been active in in every game and then Tubing lost uh, the last three games, nine of the last ten, fourteen out of the last sixteen they are ranked last in the BBL right now. Um, so what has to be our main or, or major mindset going into this one already knowing that we escaped Tubing by just winning 77-76 
earlier that, that season in, on their home court. Um, so what, what's the, the overall, what's the major mindset going, going into this matchup? First of all, looking at their record, we should not look at their record because we know teams like this, they have nothing to lose. Yeah. And they have a lot of, they have, they have great players, you know, and they started off the year bad, you know, and with, with this, in this league, this is one of the toughest league I ever played in Germany because you never know what can happen any given night. And we you know? already uh, witnessed it. Yeah, I mean, we, we're talking about Würzburg game, we're talking about Trier, we're talking about Ludwigsburg, those yeah, kind of games. Any given night, you know, you never know what can happen. So I just think, first of all, we're not supposed to look at, you know, everybody has a, you know, a hole. We're not supposed to look on their record. They're in last place because that's when... And we usually struggle playing teams like that. Maybe we're not really thinking that, you know, they're last place. But you all know, you know. So we know we usually struggle playing against teams like that. So we need to come up mm -hmm. and take the game serious. Like if we're playing an Alba Berlin, if we're playing a Munich, we need to have that same mindset. And we need to jump on them early. Because playing teams like that have nothing to lose. They just come down and they, 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 they come down and they, they just gun it. They come down and they, they just freestyle. You know, and teams like that is really scary. But it's prepared because we played, we played Bremer Heaven. So that kind of prepare us. Like we know what we're going to get into playing two big yeah. You know, and my whole thing is with me and Dave, you know, with Lewisburg, it's, it's one and one. You know, they, we won at their home, they won here. I know definitely we're trying to go 2 and 0 because I played against Alex Harris. I played against Lishka. He played with them, yeah. you know, and I definitely, I just don't want, I don't want them to beat me. Yeah. You know, because at the back of your mind, you know, when you go home during the summer and they taught you, I just put, wanted to be a 2 and 0. You know, so it makes it so much better when I'm talking to them during the summer and, you know, if we get to see each other, so. But the game plan is, I just think, is we need to jump on them early and we need, we, we don't need to watch the, the, um, their record. Because by we watching this, their record, we come off flat and we yeah. think that we're going to win the game in the first quarter. And that almost cost us the, the Bremen Hoffman game where we came off flat. Yeah, definitely. And I just think... Teams like this, we need to, it's not about the first quarter, it's not about the second quarter, it's the third quarter going into the fourth. Yeah. We have to, then when the teams usually crumble, teams like that, but if we give them life, anything can happen. Especially with them uh, bringing in two new players. I mean, they brought in Radkovica, who was a ter terrific point guard. Uh, I'm not exactly sure whether he's about to play this weekend or not. And they brought in uh, Dequan Cook, you yeah. know, who's been a who's a terrific shooter. Uh, he didn't find his, his overall rhythm, but you never know when, when. I mean, a guy like him, it's like like having Benas on your squad. He can go off any given night, and, and you have to be prepared for that. And definitely, I don't want him to find his rhythm against us because yeah. I played against him in college when, okay. I, when he played at Ohio State. And his mindset is, you know, he's, he's a scorer. And, you know, if he missed three shots in a row, he's going to shoot the next one. So we don't want guys like him to get in rhythm, you know. And we just, we just need to jump on them early. We just need to stick to our game plan, you know, we're getting better. We're getting better on defense and most of all, we know we have a week to get on um, Eugene, you know, more comfortable with the plays and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I think, I think it's going to be, a, it's gonna be a, um, a pretty tough game. Originally, I did not want to, I didn't want you to uh, talk about Eugene, but now that you mention him, everybody talk about his his uh, offensive potential with him being able to score, being able to set everybody up to, to make everybody happy on the offensive end. But the first thing I remembered when when I heard he, that he came that he came that he came to Bonn was 
from the game that we had uh, three years back facing Proteov in, in, in the Eurochange was he's a beast on the defensive end. Could you verify that? I mean, after after now almost like like ten ten practices with this guy. Yeah, definitely, he's a tough player. You know, he's a tough player, and is you know he you know he have the size. But I ain't know. I didn't think he was as quick. You know, as quick on defense, getting over. He want to. You know, and that's a, that's that's the good thing about it. He want to play defense. He don't want to take no shortcuts. And that's going to make us, that's going to make us so much better, you know, and on offense, he's a, on offense, he's a check, and on defense, he's still a check because now we don't have a guard in this league that's going to try to post him up. Nobody. You know? You uh, know I mean, I, even if we have to, out of sudden, have to switch on pick and rolls or whatever, and he's facing the four man. Or yeah. Or maybe, have, maybe even the big man. He have the strength. Five man. Come on, he post strength, me out. You know? I'll, I'll stand behind you all day long. And yeah, he have the strength, and that that's that's good, you know. And to see that, you know, he's gonna get us better as a team. Yeah. You know, get us better as a team, and you know, he can pass the ball, he can make his shots. When I when I saw, you know, going back to the Bremer Heaven game, when I saw he hit that three, that three in the corner, yeah. and I look at him and I ask him how he feel. He said he's okay, but he could get better. Cause he, he ain't playing a live game yeah. since February 2nd. So I'm like, man, you know, I'm, I'm glad, you know, we have someone like that on the yeah. team. He ain't playing a while and look how he's playing and is his first, you know, so he's a tough player, you know, and he want to go out there and get better. And just how he gel with it, gel with the team. He played with Benos before, but I can't believe he's already made, he's already uh, making jokes on me. You know, he's already making you jokes. You can't let that. Yeah, you know, he's already making jokes on me, already making jokes on his teammate. But the transitioning was so much, so easy. Because it's, you know, I, I just figure it's just the guys where we, you know, born recruits, you know, it makes yeah. it so much easier. And it's, it's like he's been here for a month or two already. So that's, that's a plus. That, that's absolutely great to hear. And there's another, another guard from our roster that we have to talk about and that would be the last topic of today's talk is Mr. Ryan Brooks. I do have the impression ever since he shaved his head that he has got the hot hand. Over the last three, day, uh, three games he's averaging 17.3 points uh, on 62% shooting. Maybe you should, uh, was there was there any talk about him losing the bet? Why did he shave his hand, or what is it that he was well, that he was able to stay that hot over the course of the week? Well, he looked at me earlier and he told me, you know, before he even did it, he told me like, Kurt, I'm on. I think I need to go and get a ball. He been telling me the whole okay. year, and he said, Kurt, I, I think you and Mel need to, you know, get a ball with me. And I'm like, no, I don't think I can do Not it. Not during you know? the winter time. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. But looking at it now, everybody was like, maybe you need to keep on, you know, yeah. rocking, rocking the ball because you've been, you've been playing great ever since. So I'm gonna see his hair is going back now. So. If anything, you know, I'll just tell him, man, you need to go back to the Baldy, you know, because <laughs> having that Baldy, he was, he was, he was incredible, you know, on the court, you know, and even certain games, he was like, Kurt, I didn't have my legs. Like, yeah. the last few games, he's like on the bench, he's like, my legs, my legs are killing me. But then he said his leg is killing me, then he went back in the game and hit a big three. Went back in the game, so... Maybe, maybe it's the ball. I'm gonna have to tell him keep it. So everybody been saying that. So yeah, you make sure he keeps that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> before we sat down, he t he told me uh, at the end of the practice that he might uh, let it grow. Is here, so you make sure he, he shakes his well, head. I feel next time in order for him, uh, I'm gonna try keep, try make him keep the ball. And if he's giving me a tough time about it, maybe I should say, okay, if you go ball, I'll go ball with you. 
Because he want me to go bald. He want he want a company. So, or <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe you'll grow it and and have a uh, cornrows once yeah. once again. Yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. Also, I saw all the pictures of you yeah. having cornrows. Yeah, but that's I, way back. I yeah, guess. I was thinking about it's too cold over here. So maybe one of these time I might grow it up. We'll see. Time only time will tell. <laughs> So uh, I need your promise that you talk Ryan into shaving his head before the tubing in game. And Definitely, then we'll, I got you. And then we'll see what happens. So Mr. Musulubi, thanks for stopping by. Have a good thanks week of practice. Thanks for having me. And we'll see each other at the tubing game. Oh, okay.